Hey, good morning, everyone. Welcome to what's the course? Two One Four, developing the human spirit. Uh, thank you all for connecting. Uh, let's pray, and then we will start. Can somebody pray, please? Father God, we thank you for this day and thank you for this day. We surrender everything into your hand. And when we learn about uh, developing the human spirit, God, you help us, you guide us by your Holy Spirit, God. Give us new revelation and uh, give us the understanding, the knowledge, God. And we submit everything into your hand. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 All right. So let's just quickly review what we did last week from lesson two, and we'll try to pick up some speed. Otherwise, um, we may not cover everything. So last week, we um, um, talked about just some aspects of the human spirit. That's the real person. It has traits and characteristics. Uh, we talked about, we mentioned some of the faculties of the human spirit, which we're going to look at each of them in detail. And we mentioned seven functions of the human spirit. Again, we will look at each of these in detail. And we also mentioned that the, the born again human spirit, it needs to be nurtured. That is, it needs to be fed and it needs to be exercised. So just like our human body, just like our human body that we feed, we exercise, we rest, all of that, the human spirit has to be nurtured. You have to care for it, and uh, then it will grow. So lesson number three, chapter three, um, what we want to talk about is um, uh, see the connection of how the spirit affects the soul and the body. Okay. If your spirit is strong, then your soul and body can be healthy. Right? It's all connected, spirit, soul, body. Okay. So if your spirit is strong, soul and body can be healthy. And, I'm, and in this chapter, I'm just going to go through, um, there are many scriptures, I just you know put them all here in this chapter. Uh, but you can see various conditions of the human spirit. Okay, uh, So you can just look. Some of it is good. Some of it is not good. But to understand that uh, the human spirit can be in different conditions, just like the body. Uh, body can be tired. Body can be sick. Body can be hurt. Body can have pain. And if the body is not in good condition, then we cannot perform, right? Uh, you can't do something. But if the body is in good condition, you can do. Similarly, the condition of the human spirit. We will see that the human spirit can have different conditions. And, if, uh, and, and the goal is for us to learn how to keep our human spirit strong and healthy, right? How to keep building it, how to keep nurturing it. Uh, and let the human spirit then affect our soul and body. Okay, so this is going through a list of uh, uh, scriptures, and we won't read all the scriptures, but you can study these uh, scriptures in detail. But we see that the spirit can be in anguish, anguish of spirit. Anguish means, uh, or the anguish of spirit means, the spirit can be very uh, in a very difficult position. It's almost like if you if you tie up. A person physically, right? you put him in chains. Huh? He's not. It's going to be very uncomfortable, very pain, very restrained, uh, painful, so on. So the imagine the spirit being like that. There's an anguish. The spirit is very uh, discouraged, in pain, uh, crushed uh, because of things that are going on around us. You know, it's affecting us. Sometimes the human spirit can be against God. You know, that means in the spirit, uh, people are against God. They, they don't want anything to do with God. Okay. Um, the spirit can be angry. So the anger can come up from our spirit. Uh, you can feel bound in the spirit. Now here, 
Paul was feeling something in the spirit. And he was feeling as though he was bound in his spirit. So there's a, you know, like, okay, I'm restraining, something's restraining me, holding me back. Um, you can feel that. You can be broken or contrite in your spirit. That means uh, there is a sense of uh, brokenness. Uh, the Bible talks about this, a broken heart, a broken and contrite heart, uh, or um, uh, the spirit is broken, a broken spirit. And uh, uh, so broken, it can be broken in a good sense, it can be broken in a bad sense. A good sense means there is a lot of contrition, there's a lot of I am sorry kind of feeling. But it can also be broken in the sense of being hurt, being crushed, being wounded. Okay, so if I am broken uh, in a good sense, in, a, uh, in that I am repenting before God, that's a good thing. But broken in the sense of being wounded, then I need healing. You know, I need to ask God to heal me. And the Bible says, for example, you look at some verses here on page ten. Uh, uh, verse, uh, um, Proverbs 15, 13. A merry heart makes a cheerful countenance, but by sorrow of the heart, the spirit is broken. I mean, sorrow, very feeling, very sad. For oh, whatever, you know, there could be so many things. Uh, the spirit is now in a very wounded, broken state. Proverbs 17, 22. A merry heart does good like medicine, but a broken spirit dries the bones. Think of this. A broken spirit dries the bones the spirit is broken but it's affecting the body hmm? dries the bones dries the bones it's another way of so the if you think of it the bones is from there that's where all the red blood cells come you know this is produced inside the bones and uh, the bones are drying I mean there's no life in this person but why the spirit is broken. The spirit has been crushed, or something has happened. And now, though, even the health, their health is being affected. Right? Um, Proverbs 18 14. The spirit of a man will sustain him in sickness, but who can bear a broken spirit? That means if the spirit is strong, even through sickness, it'll he'll be strong, he'll be sustained, he'll fight. He won't give up, you know, if the spirit is strong. So body is suffering, but spirit says, no, I want to fight, I want to live. So the spirit of man will sustain him in sickness, but if the spirit is broken, who can help him? They say, I don't want to live. I'm ready to go. I There's no, like the spirit is giving up. Then you can't do much. Okay. So you see how the condition of the spirit is affecting the body. Um, we can all, we also read about uh, uh, the spirit of heaviness. Um, so there is something that's causing heaviness on the spirit. Spirit is feeling burdened, depressed, weighed down. Um, can also have a calm spirit. That means there is a sense of calmness, peacefulness, um, quietness. We can be compelled in the spirit. Spirit is urging us, motivating us, prompting us, and go, go, you know, something you're feeling inside. I have to do this. The spirit is compelling you. Um, your spirit can be uh, uh, so. Caleb had a different spirit, that means he, he was very daring. You know, others were all being afraid, but here was one person saying, Let us go. A daring spirit, courageous spirit, a different spirit, right. You can seek God by my spirit within me. I will seek you early. So a, a spirit that is hungry for God. Uh, we can err in spirit. That means somehow the spirit is... Oops. Uh, we can err in spirit. Uh, the spirit is now caught up in some form of error. Uh, the What the spirit is pursuing, understanding, uh, is, is is wrong. Erred, erred in spirit. We can have be a person of an excellent spirit. That means um, in your heart, 
you want to you know do things well you are pursuing excellence you can be of an excellent spirit outstanding better you can be a, a person of a faithful spirit or unfaithful so faithfulness or unfaithfulness is something that's coming from the heart a faithful spirit or unfaithfulness okay so um, uh, somebody can have a very faithful spirit very faithful very sincere or somebody could be very unfaithful today they are on your side tomorrow then somebody else's side is <laughs> somebody else <laughs> so it's like that. it's the condition of the spirit um, you can have a very fervent spirit fervent meaning very zealous always uh, wanting you know ready full of zeal fervent in spirit fire is always burning very zealous very passionate uh, there could be also uh, people are grieving in the spirit they are uh, you know they are they are they're, they're grieving over something very sorrowful over something uh, and uh, the spirit is you know just uh, coping with that or handling that processing that grief uh, in, inside them uh, you can also see uh, page uh, 12 people can be hardened in their heart or in their spirit that means it's almost like no matter what you say I'm not going to change you know I'm, they're so hard hard in their spirit they're made up uh, and uh, you know sometimes it can be because of pride that the spirit is hardened so we also see uh, uh, pride can be something in the spirit so these wrong uh, your know, pride or humility uh, these these what we refer to as the fruit of the spirit or good traits character traits are from the spirit pride or humility the opposite so we can be of a humble spirit um, poor in spirit somebody could be of a hasty spirit that means they're just uh, very they rash hasty impatient or you know the pause opposite would be of course they are patient or uh, in spirit there is the heat uh, or the spirit is very agitated stirred up uh, 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 this, this you know the spirit is really on you know, moved to do something uh, God can inspire us in our spirit job 30 to 8 there's a spirit in man and the breath of Almighty gives him understanding in our spirit, God gives us wisdom. Uh, the spirit can make diligent search. That means the spirit is seeking for truth, seeking for information. You know, Psalm 77, verse 6. Um, it's searching, it's seeking, wanting to learn. Uh, you can also feel overwhelmed in the spirit. That means the spirit is feeling like, this is too much for me. I cannot handle it. Feeling overwhelmed. Uh, you see many... Uh, you can be patient in spirit. Uh, patience is a fruit of the spirit. The spirit can perceive. Um, uh, that means the spirit is picking up, understand, you know, what it's seeing, perceiving in the spirit. Uh, the spirit can be pure, a spirit in whom there is no deceit, pure heart, pure spirit. Uh, the spirit can be revived. That means it can be refreshed. Uh, it can be renewed in its strength. The spirit rejoices. My spirit has rejoiced. Uh, it's being able to rejoice. Um, Self-control comes from the spirit. You have a rule uh, over your own spirit. I'm just going through some more here. Please bear with me. Self-governing Self means you're able to self-control, govern yourself. So the spirit... Um, from inside, you are controlling, governing yourself, keeping your whole being in control. You know, so no matter what people say, irritating, you're governing, self-governing, or self-control. Right? Your spirit, a spirit, can be steadfast. That means steady, uh, unshaken, faithful. Uh, the spirit can be stirred up. Yeah, as we see earlier, you know, the spirit can be moved. To do something, uh, sometimes uh, 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 people are stirred up in their hearts. I feel like I want to do this, or you know, God is 
intentionally moving them in the spirit to do something. Uh, the spirit can become stronger. Uh, so we can see here that uh, they became strong in spirit. And uh, we are strengthened with might by his spirit in the inner man. Our inner man is being strengthened. Spirit can be troubled, um, uh, disturbed about something. You know, so we see examples of that. His spirit was troubled. Become anxious. My spirit is anxious about something. Uh, so you can see those examples here. Um, last few thoughts. Um, the spirit can be willing. So... Everyone whose spirit is willing, right? So uh, many times when we ask people to do something, you know, we let them make the decision. If you feel free in your spirit, you do. If you don't, yeah. So let the willingness come from your heart. That, that spirit is willing, okay? So I, I went through this long list very quickly. You can think about each of these. Um, that... The spirit inside us, the human spirit, can have all of these emotions or can experience all these things, right? So it's to show us that there's a lot that happens in our spirit. And we need to uh, recognize this. We need to deal with the wrong things, you know. Uh, but the good things we need to develop. Right? Wrong things like being hasty, unfaithful, angry, uh, jealous, or wrong things that come in the spirit. Okay, God created me a clean heart. Oh God, deal with my spirit. You know, change me there in my heart. So if the change happens in the spirit, then it is a permanent change. That means you really changed. Otherwise, simply, you know, if it's only an external thing, ah, oh, pastor is watching, so I'll be like this. <laughs> He's not watching, I'll do what I want. That is not a permanent change. That is only temporary. <laughs> That's only for sure, right? But permanent change happens in the spirit. We go before God. God, I want to be a man of a patient spirit. I want to be a man of a calm spirit. I want to be a man of a humble spirit. I want to be a man of a clean heart. Uh, so you go before God like that. Then God works that in your heart. When that happens in your heart, then that's who you are. That's who you become. You're, that's a permanent change. Then you don't care. Anybody watching, not watching, doesn't matter. That's who I am. Right? It's always like that because God has worked that in your spirit. God, make me somebody of a bold spirit, of a strong spirit, of a courageous spirit, of a steadfast spirit. Make me like that. Oh, God will work it in your spirit. When your spirit becomes like that, then that's who you are. Nobody can shake it. Nobody can change it. And regardless of what situation you're going through, that's how you will be. You'll be strong, you'll be courageous, right? And if we are feeling things in our spirit, Lord, I'm feeling overwhelmed in my spirit. Oh, go before God. God, help me. God, refresh me. I'm feeling tired in my spirit. God, refresh me. You know, strengthen me. He'll do that. Okay. So the goal is, go ahead, Prince. Question? Yes, like uh, we have seen uh, how the condition of our spirit affects our soul and body. Is it also the same opposite way, like the condition of how uh, what we think, uh, how we behave also affects our soul? The answer is yes. But we must come to a place where it shouldn't. Example. Normally, I'm just saying generally speaking, the condition of the body and the mind will then overpower the spirit, human spirit. Like a body is sick, then the person immediately feels very discouraged, very depressed. Maybe God is angry. Maybe God is teaching me a lesson. No, no, maybe you ate uh, spoiled biryani. 
<laughs> Maybe that's the problem. <laughs> Not God is teaching. But anyway, generally people are, oh, Holy Spirit is the God angry. Thing. No, 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 no. <laughs> I have stomach problems. <laughs> what is, just uh, So people, something is happening in the body. Then the spirit gets affected. Or something is happening in the mind. They let the emotions affect the condition of the spirit. I'm saying generally. But we must not allow that to happen. Our spirit must be so strong that even if we face something in the body or something comes in the mind, we must be strong in the spirit and our spirit must rise up above that and say, no, body, you listen to me. I'm the boss. Body is not the boss. Body is the house in which I live. Mind, listen to me. Yeah. So, like you, for example, you find the psalmist. He's talking to his mind. Psalm forty-two, I think. Why are you? I, I, I memorized it in King James, so it comes out in King James. But why art thou cast down, O my soul? Hope thou in God. So he's talking to his soul. Hmm? Why art thou cast down, O my soul? Hope thou in God, who is the health of your countenance, the strength. So he's talking to the soul. You know, or we know Psalm 103. Bless the Lord, O my soul. So he's saying, Soul, come on, bless the Lord. You don't feel like it? So bless the Lord. <laughs> bless the Lord, O my soul. All that is within me, bless his holy. So sometimes soul says, I don't feel like blessing. <laughs> I want to sit, I don't want to praise God. No, no, come on, bless the Lord. So what is happening? Spirit is telling the soul and the body what to do. That is how we, uh, we must come to that place. Otherwise, what happens? Body and soul suppress the spirit. Then we actually live defeated lives. Because body can face so many things. Same thing with the emotions. We can face so many things. Somebody says something, somebody says something. Weather is not good. <laughs> Whatever, the, the feelings, the emotions keep changing. But we cannot let that affect our spirit. The spirit has to be stronger. And the spirit has to dictate to the... Uh, and also, Pastor, like... Uh... Is it also like uh, demonic oppressions or uh, demonic act uh, in, can also influence in our spirit condition? Like if a person is having a spirit, uh, like depressed spirit or broken spirit or angry spirit, anguish, uh, can it also be a reason of demonic uh, activities or? Yeah. So normally, again, I'm saying normally for the majority of the time. The way the devil works is he tries to do it through the mind. So the devil can, so especially for a believer, the devil cannot touch our spirit. Our spirit is protected. We are covered by the blood of Jesus. Holy Spirit is living there. It's a temple of God. He can't go directly there. So what does he do? He tries to play with our minds. Right? Wrong thoughts. Fear, uh, guilt, condemnation, accusation. Those are the things he tries to put in our mind. And from there, through that, we'll try to affect our spirit. So you can't go directly to the spirit. But for an unbeliever, if the unbeliever opens the door to sin, basically, basically sin opens the door. For unbeliever, they don't think about sin, right? They think it's okay now. So that is an easy entry point. And if they open the door, then they, the wicked spirits can inhabit not only the soul, but go straight into the spirit. Okay. That is what we call as demon possession. Right? That they, believer cannot. But it can trouble the mind.
So, uh, page 15. Mm. So, yeah. so, we have to intentionally take that out. Spirit, soul, and body. Strengthen the spirit all the time. Live out of the spirit. Mm. And uh, in any situation, we say, okay, let me start with the spirit. God, what are you saying? What is the Holy Spirit telling me? From there we live. Spirit, soul, and body. Pastor, when um, people will get pa panic when real situations in life. So, Pastor, you're telling that we have to deal that conditions with the word of God, right? Whatever. Suppose some bad news comes. Somebody says something happened. Of course, uh, immediately our mind, you know, starts thinking, hey, what happened, this, that, oh, what is this, and something. So some bad news, our mind is immediately will work and think about so many things, you know, what happened, this, that, and And then that will cause emotion. I feel fear, feel ang anxious, feel sad, whatever that, you know, depending on that news. Okay. We're not denying the situation. We're not denying how we are feeling. That is normal. Any human being will feel like when you get a news, yeah, you'll feel sad, you'll feel anxious or whatever. That is normal. But the next step. Are we going to let that news affect our whole person, including our spirit, then fully dip down, fully depressed? Or are we going to let our spirit rise up and do what God wants us to do? So example, at that moment you say, what does the Bible say? What did God say? God said, in everything give thanks, for this is the will of God concerning you. So at that moment you say, God, I don't I received this news. I don't know why it happened. I'm feel it, you know, I'm feeling maybe I'm feeling sad or I'm feeling anxious or I'm maybe in feeling afraid, whatever, what are that news is. But God, you said, in everything give thanks. So God, I praise you. I praise you that you're a good God. I praise you that you're bigger than the situation. I praise you that you will you're faithful to me or to you know whoever is concerned. That you are faithful. I praise you that you will solve this problem. And then you, if you have to deal with the situation, you deal with it. How sometimes you may have to speak to it. Example: Jesus and the and the disciples are going in the boat. There's a big storm. Disciples are afraid. That is normal reaction. You're seeing a storm, nobody is going to be happy. No, no. They're afraid. The emotion is affected. Jesus is very peaceful. Still sleeping. So they go wake him up. Lord, we're going to sink. Now when Jesus woke up, I'm sure he saw the storm, the wind, the waves. Yeah, it's real. But you see what this, he did from the Spirit. He said, peace, be still. Then he turns around to his disciples. And he asks them, where is your faith? So meaning, hey, you should be living out of your faith. Faith is in the spirit. Yes, the wind is real, the storm is real, boat is full, I mean water, all this is real. But you have to live out of your spirit. Where is your faith? So Jesus is telling a very beautiful example, right? Yes, there is a storm, but let your spirit, what you have in the spirit, dominate. So sometimes you say, Lord, I praise you. Then what else? I must speak to the storm. So you say, in the name of Jesus, I speak over the situation. I speak peace over it. I command every work of the enemy to stop. 
you know so you're letting what is your spirit dominate the situation that is how we are supposed to live otherwise uh, we'll be like paul rebuked to corinthians you know first corinthians 3 he said you're living like ordinary people you know if you look at it this way first corinthians we are not supposed to live like ordinary people like just the others you're living like mere men first corinthians 3 um and verse um, 3 he's actually rebuking them because uh, they are fighting with each other and all of that but notice what he's saying first corinthians 3 3 somebody can read it you are still worldly for since there is jealousy and quarreling among you are you not worldly are you not acting like merry men so saying see you are fighting there is division there is jealousy that means all these things are worldly things fleshly things you are behaving like mere men like ordinary men you are behaving like that. he's rebuking them and you are not supposed to live like you are supposed to be different to live from the spirit. If you live from the spirit, no jealousy. No, no, no. You, you know. All right. Let's go back to the lesson. Otherwise, we'll go off somewhere. Uh, page 15. So, we must maintain a strong, healthy, wholesome human spirit. So, that is the focus. We want to learn how to do that. Right? Paul wrote 2 Corinthians 4.16. We do not lose heart, even though our outward man is perishing, the inward man is being renewed. So see the difference. Outward man, Buddha ho, Buddha ho jata hai na, <laughs> is growing old. <laughs> outward man is perishing, inward man is becoming stronger. So there's a difference. He's not saying, oh, I'm growing old, my spirit also growing old. No, no, no. But physically, I'm growing old. Spirit, inner man is being strong, being renewed. Yeah. So what is in our hearts affects our lives, and what's in our hearts is released into our lives. We will, we will see that. Now, um, in all of this, uh, words, you know, words that people speak or words we speak can affect our spirit. So last Sunday we talked a little bit about that. Uh, sometimes people can speak words and hurt us. They speak words to condemn us. And, you know, it can hurt us, actually. They are saying something, but the wound can go to our hearts, feel pain. Why he said that? Very painful, like that. They criticize, or like that. So, wound. Uh, so, we have to be careful about the words, now, what they say and what we say. <laughs> both it works both ways. But wounds can hurt. Uh, words can wound the spirit. So, be careful. Uh, it can break the spirit. Can crush the spirit. So, understand that. The enemy uses this. So what can the devil do? He can only plant words, ideas, thoughts, imagination here. So he can whisper, like wrong word, wrong idea. But if you don't stop it here, it can crush our spirit. Like he... Oh, your uh, a thought comes suddenly. Uh, God doesn't love you. It's a thought, but it is made up of words. God doesn't really love you. Something I'm like just making uh, making up. But those words come, thoughts come. If you don't catch it and don't deal with it, it goes into our heart. It can crush us. We feel weak. We feel oh, God doesn't love me. I'm not worthy. I can't do this. And, you know, so be careful of uh, words. Okay. Um, 
let me just see. Uh, let me just see if there are any questions online. Any questions from online class students? All right. Let's go to Proverbs chapter 4. Just want us to look at something here. Proverbs 4. And verse 22, Proverbs 4, um, verse 20 to 23. Proverbs 4, 20 to 23. Somebody could read it. Proverbs chapter 4, verse 20. My son, pay attention to what I say. Listen closely to my words. Do not let them out of your sight. Keep them within your heart, for they are life to those who find them, and health to a man's whole body. Above all else, guard your heart, for it is the wellspring of life. So he says, verses 20 to 22, you know, he's saying, pay attention to my words. Right? So he's saying, keep my words in your heart. Keep, you know, the word of God must be in our heart. But look at verse 23, it says, keep your heart, that means your spirit, guard your heart, right? With all diligence, protect your heart, because out of it come the issues, the matters of your life. Okay, so the things that come into your life or the forces that shape your life, the things that you produce in your life, they come from your heart. Guard your heart. Guard your heart with all diligence. So, like Security guard, don't fall asleep. All Be alert. Protect your heart. Because from there are coming things into your own life. So that means... What happens in your life is determined by what you put in your heart. That's why he's saying, pay attention to my words. Keep them in the midst of your heart. Keep God's word in your heart. Then it will shape your life. Because our spirit, the condition of our spirit affects our life. So this is a principle that we keep in mind. Now, if we build a strong, healthy spirit, put God's word in it, the God's word, the fruit of the spirit, the character of the Holy Spirit, you build a strong, healthy spirit, it will bless. What comes out in your life will be good, strong, healthy. You know, the things that God wants, you will release into your life. Okay. So we are going to focus on that. Now, let's go to the next chapter. I'll just introduce that chapter. Uh, we'll, uh, we will continue that next week. In the next chapter, what we will see, chapter 4, is that there are analogies of the human spirit, or the human spirit is compared to certain things. Okay, uh, We'll just do a review. We'll study it in detail next week. For example, the human spirit is like a house. So you think about this. My heart is like a house. So some things about the house. People, somebody can come and live in that house. House is meant to for somebody to live. And Jesus wants to, or God wants to live in our hearts or in our house. House also must be kept clean. So that's another thing to think about. So really, we are the house of God. Right? God wants to, lives in our hearts. Keep the heart clean. Another picture of the human spirit is lamp. If uh, the Bible was being written in our day, say torchlight or he'll say <laughs> your <laughs> phone light or something. But those days, they, they lamp. 
basically lamp what is the lamp it gives light and because of that light you can see the path you're going hmm? so the human spirit is like a lamp and we will see scriptures so when we want guidance when we want to know which way to go it is that we are going to receive it in our spirit of course we can discuss with people and have conversation we can get counsel we can get input that is a good thing but for god god will normally speak to us by lighting our lamp in our spirit so we must it is good to get counsel all that fine but to listen to god spirit the human spirit is also a place of deposit like bank bank account deposit place where you put your treasure so those days they talked about treasure <clears throat> today we talk about money where do you put your money put in the bank it's a place of deposit okay <clears throat> it's also a spring we read about this uh, out of your spirit will flow the issues of life will come the issues of life very interesting it's also a womb john 7 the greek word there that is used is womb like giving birth so if you and i want to give birth it takes place first in our spirit and then we release it into our world we will look at all these verses, you know, next time. I'm just going, giving uh, us an idea. The human spirit is also like a ground, uh, like a field. What can you do on a field? If you want, you leave it like that, don't do anything. Or you can plow the field, put seed, put rain, and you'll get nice harvest. Right? So it's like a field. You want a harvest? Sow some good seeds. Take care of it. You'll get the harvest. If you don't put any seed, you can keep on praying. Nothing will happen. <laughs> because seed, uh, the, the field, you have to put seed. You have to have, uh, take care of it. Um, another picture of the human heart is like uh, stones or tablets to be written on. Now, in those days, they used that picture. We, today, we can say maybe it is some, uh, uh, you know, place where you can write some or you can um, um, write or uh, imprint things. You know, where you, uh, Paul is saying, you know, I, you are letters written by me through the Holy Spirit. That means I'm, I've written on your heart. I'm imprinted on your heart. I put the truth of God into your heart. So we can think about something that we write in a permanent way. That I've permanently marked in your heart the word of God by the Spirit. And lastly, uh, another picture is it's a vessel, a container. Uh, that means you can fill it with something. It can be used for something, right? So uh, we need to think about this. Because God is saying, I want you to know that your spirit is like this. Right? It's like He's telling us, it's like this. That means it is serving these functions for you. It's like a field. So put some seed in it, you will have a harvest. It's like a vessel. You fill it up with good things, you can pour it out. I can use you. It is like a deposit. You put good deposit in, when you need, you can take withdrawal. If you have no deposit, no withdrawal. Hmm? It is like a womb. You want to give birth to something? Yeah. Start with the womb. You can give birth to things of God. So like this, we will discuss, right? We'll do that next week. And yeah, go for it. Yeah, you have a question, Anand? Oh, online. Okay. Online, Jachin has a question. Generally, women are more emotional, but mostly men deal the same situation differently, mostly by logic. So here it is not the 
not from a quiet spirit. So there is a difference when we train our spirit in God's word and remain in that still place, taking our decisions. Just a thought, not sure if I am right. So, um, so there is, so, so there is, like, I think if I understand what Jachin is saying correctly, the way the brain operates for men and women is quite different. So there are lots of studies on that. Men are very compartmentalized, very logical, generally speaking. I'm not saying everybody, but generally, they're they're more compartmentalized, logical. Uh, women are more intertwined in their thinking. They look at the big picture, how everything connects with each other. So everything in the world is connected to everything. So uh, they're generally like that. That's the logical, the, the psychological part. But as believers, if we are living out of our spirit, then both men and women can basically display the same fruit of the spirit. Right? We can all believe us, men or women, walk in love, gentleness, kindness, meekness. You know. Yeah, psychologically, that means the how we process things will be different, but the character that comes through would be kindness, gentleness, self-control, the fruit of the Spirit. That means the Spirit is dominating regardless of how our individual psychological makeup, you know, some people are extroverts, some people are introverts, you know, all those things are there. That is true. That is how we're made up. But this, even the Spirit dominates, what we will see is the fruit of the Spirit through both men and women. So um, um, I'm not sure if I understood you just, just in what you said, but Hopefully, I'm in this right line of thought. Okay. All right. Um, we'll continue this next week. We will look at these different pictures and see how they, what they mean to us, and how we should uh, apply them. Okay. Somebody get close, and then we'll dismiss. Lord, we thank you for this time, O oh Lord Father. We thank you for all the insights that you have given us, O oh Lord Father Jesus. Oh, everything that we have learned, Lord, oh, help us, O oh Lord Father, to apply it, O oh Lord Father, in our lives, O oh Lord Father. Help us, O oh Lord Father, to live from the place of spirit, O oh Lord Father, and to walk in your spirit along with you, Jesus. You oh, come and you have your ways in our lives. Oh, we thank you for everything. We give you glory and honor. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, everyone. Bless. See you next week. Bye.